time for us to be joined by viewers on the internet, and we welcome those joining us to Piedmont Presbyterian Church. We have some very special music coming up, and we hope that you will enjoy us, enjoy, enjoy the music, and join us once again each and every Sunday. <coughs> Chapter 4, verses 13. 
took him with them and in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with them. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the readings that we heard today invoke us to ask questions and to find answers in our faith. And may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts always be acceptable in thy sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. When I read the lesson of Jesus calming the waters, I think of an awesome, respectable fear. The disciples were afraid, and they confronted Jesus about what they perceived to be indifference. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? They question him, but their fears are turned into utter respect, an amazing, awesome respect. A new faith. The disciples knew Jesus to be a teacher and to be a friend. But in this crossing, they know that Jesus can bring order out of chaos and that he is truly divine. The disciples were afraid, and it appeared that they were troubled by Jesus' indifference, but it couldn't have been the storm that they feared because they were experienced sailors. Neither was it the indifference of Jesus that really worried them. They were frightened by the awesome power of Jesus to make things calm right then and right there. At first it appeared that he was indifferent to their plight. Do you not care if we perish? He stifles a storm which proved that he cared. But they were still afraid. The fact that he stilled the, the storm was simply overwhelming to them. It defied logic. It was beyond their comprehension. It was beyond their control, but Jesus was still in charge. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Questions actually propel our faith journey. Patrick Overton reflects in a poem called Faith. When you come to the edge of all the light that you have, and take the first step into the darkness of the unknown, you must believe one of two things will happen. There will be something solid for you to stand on, or you will be taught how to fly. Many times in our lives, we face the unknown, the uncertainty of the future, an outcome that we cannot see. And what we, have, what we have to hold on in these moments is our faith that God is with us, 
the God will be our solid rock to stand on, or that we will be taught how to fly. Today's gospel lesson shows us what this looks like with a new understanding of the disciples as Jesus calms the wind and the sea. The story illustrates faith. It is not simple, and it includes a crucial question. Who is he? Who is he, the disciples asked each other, as the waves roll and the winds roar, and their boat pitches in the sea? Who is this, they ask about Jesus, when he calms the storm? that even the winds and the sea obey him. The disciples asked Jesus, who is he? <laughs> if we can answer this question, we can describe our faith and equip ourselves for those times that will come when we will be required to step off into the darkness and into the unknown. People often look to the Bible for answers. But I encourage you to look to the Bible for questions, to reflect upon, and to bring you to a deeper relationship with our God. God asked in the Garden of Eden, Adam, Eve, where are you? Cain asked, What am I, my brother's keeper? The Psalms lament. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? John the Baptist asked, Are you the one who is to come? Jesus asked Peter, Who do you say I am? And Pilate asked Jesus, what is true? The Apostle Paul asked, what can, we, what can separate us from the love of God? It is, the, it is in asking those questions that describes what we believe. The questions that continue the conversation with God. There is something in us that likes, actually likes the adventures of questions. Yet we cling to the security of answers when we are facing a frightening unknown. We are faced sometimes with questions that demand our response without really having a clear answer. Medical technology, for example, forces us into questions that no one should have to address. And while we're grateful for the advances in healthcare today, it's tough being caught in the dilemma of a difficult decision with little guidance but our faith in God. Do you have treatment and a limited hope of prolonged life? Or do you live your life that you're given and let nature take its course? When do you pull the plug on someone? What about organ donation? Questions like these are now commonplace, as many of us have already learned. Such questions challenge us to think big, to think beyond to examine our innermost selves, to actually involve God. Such questions require us to ask, who am I? And who is God? Such questions are life and faith changing. Look at the disciples. They were all and forever more changed, forever clarified by the questions that did. Think of the time in your life when you were faced with a question, the answer to which changed 
the direction of your life forever. Will you marry me? What shall we tell her? How shall we break the news? Do we continue treatment? Where do you want to live? What do you want to study? The way that we answer these questions forever influences our knowledge of ourselves and of our understanding of God. Jesus was with the disciples, yet they lacked faith. Would you be afraid during a crisis if Jesus was sleeping nearby? I think not. What they were afraid of was actually faith <coughs> itself. It was an awesome, respectable fear. They were awed by the power of God. To have faith in God is scary business. It's also risky. It means we have to trust in the power of God instead of our own ability. It means we have to take risks that we are not always willing to take. There are times when all of us find ourselves in deep water, deeply troubling and anxious times. Where is God, we might ask. At first, it feels like you're on a sinking ship. But afterwards, you feel more confident and resolve that in those deep waters, God is actually with you. We don't often recognize God, and like the disciples, we often feel that God is asleep. But God is with us, and is there for us to tap into His amazing power. We need to have the faith to believe that he does listen to all of our questions. He is there to comfort us. And that he will give us an answer in his own time. To have faith in the power of God means to believe that we can be transformed. It means that people can be redeemed. It means that God can do for us what it is impossible for us to do for ourselves. It means change is inevitable. And sometimes that terrifies us. It means we commit ourselves to faithfulness, which requires a way, a change in the way that we normally live our lives. Change is extremely difficult and fills us with fear. What will happen? How will we manage the future? <coughs> How can we trust in a God who works beyond our wildest imagination? Change is difficult for all of us. Everyone will have some rough times ahead, storms that will challenge us, throw us off course, and even scare the daylights out of us. And sometimes we may even feel that we need to put on a life jacket. As we heard in our reading today and in our children's sermon, storms come up suddenly in our lives, and we need to get safely to shore. Just like the disciples, God does not promise us a peaceful voyage. God does promise, however, that He will always be present. And when we truly believe this, when we truly know that Jesus still calms the storms today, the sudden storms that come up in our lives, and when we trust in Him, to give us peace in our hearts, even in the middle of the storm, we will be amazed 
and might ask, Who is this man that even the winds and the sea obey? <laughs> Living with questions is often difficult. There can be ambiguity, doubts, uncertainty, and lots of loose ends to questions. But as difficult as it can be to live in the ambiguity of questions, trusting that God will be with us at the edge between light and darkness, we may find that standing in the unknown with God brings us more blessing than the imagination can even dream of. Asking God a question and then prayerfully seeking His guidance will bring us to a closer relationship with our Lord. The Apostle Paul wrote, to the Corinthian church that in Jesus every one of God's promises is a yes. Whatever questions confront us, may we trust God to be our answer. Remember Overton's poem, when you come to the edge of all the light that you have and take the first step into the darkness of the unknown, you must believe one of two things will happen. There will be something solid for you to stand upon, or that you will be taught how to fly. Every journey brings blessings. Journeys don't begin with answers. Journeys begin with questions, whether it's a journey to the next state, or whether it's a journey of faith. Who do you think you are? Who is this that calms the wind and the seas? Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? Blessings to you on your journey.